Hi guys, uh, this video is about gas laws. So we're gonna be learning a little bit about gas laws and um, <clears throat> throughout the video, it will pause and have you write an answer of some kind. If it's not a multiple choice question, then uh, you need to write your answer in great detail. Like if I ask you to describe something, I want you to actually write out a description using adjectives, adverbs, all the good descriptive words. So, um, Firstly, let's talk a little bit about this scenario. Here's my crappy drawing of a balloon. Um, <laughs> but I have blown some air into this balloon, okay? And as you can hopefully see, I've got different types of molecules in here. I've got um, these little blue ones that have triple bonds. That's kind of hard to see. Um, those are my nitrogens. And um, these are carbon dioxide. They've got double bonds, uh, carbon in the middle, oxygens on the outside. Um, I've got some little water molecules. Hopefully you can see those distinctive little V shape. Um, I got some argon. This is just a, they're monatomic. And then I've got some oxygen, O2 with double bonds. Um, <coughs> in real life, um, the proportions would not be exactly this way. I just thought I'd draw some representation of all the different molecules. So um, I want you to start thinking about how gas molecules travel. Um, do they do they just um, do they flow past one another? Are they pretty rigid? Do they um, travel in a straight line? Um, do they jet toward each other? Are they fairly quick or slow? And um, hopefully, from what you remember about gases, they move quickly. Um, they move, they're very excited compared to the other states of matter. They move quickly. They actually move in a straight line. <clears throat> so one molecule will be moving in a straight path until it collides with another molecule. And then they will bounce off of each other in an elastic collision. Um, and then they'll continue into a, a different path until they collide with something else, maybe with the edge of this balloon. Um, <clears throat> any case... Um, gases, uh, do have collisions. And so, um, thinking about the way that those molecules travel, um, let's say that I were to heat up all of the, uh, the, the gases in this balloon. Okay. Um, obviously you wouldn't apply an actual, like, you know, fire to it because, um, that would be dangerous. <laughs> but, um, but let's say that I applied some kind of heat to it. This is my representation of heat. I've heated it up and now it's going to um, heat all of the particles inside the balloon. What do you think would happen? Like I want you to describe what would happen to the motion of the particles when you apply heat and you heat them up. Okay, hopefully you describe the particles as moving faster. Okay, they're still going to be moving in a singular direction until they collide with something and then they will bounce off. Um, that, that type of motion doesn't change, but the speed will change. They'll be moving faster. In fact, they'll have um, more collisions every second um, with each other and with the sides of the balloon, okay? Speaking of collisions, if that's occurring and you've heated it up, uh, then what might happen to the size of the balloon? Okay, hopefully you selected that the balloon will increase in size, and that's exactly what happens. Because those, those collisions occur, and I know you can see the little balloon inside, that's totally fine, um, but because these collisions occur more often, the balloon, like the, the way that the balloon is designed, is it will expand to make more room for those collisions. So um, now the molecules are further spread apart and um, they're still colliding with the edges of the balloon about the same rate. They are, um, but they're moving more quickly. And so the balloon has expanded. And um, i to keep track of my, uh, my questions here. So the size of the balloon has expanded. Now, balloons are kind of a special thing. Balloons are are designed so that they will expand in the case of more collisions. Um, and, and the number of collisions can be described as pressure, okay? So the more collisions you have, the higher the pressure is. 
the less collisions you have, the lower the pressure is. That's basically all that pressure is. It's just a measure of those collisions. So I want you to imagine instead of the balloon, a box, um, a box with molecules inside of it, okay? And if I were to have a box with molecules, uh, gas molecules inside of it, and I were to heat that up and they were moving more quickly, um, what would happen to the pressure inside of that box? Okay, the pressure, hopefully you said, would increase because the excited particles would have uh, a greater velocity and they would be colliding more often with the sides of the box. And because it doesn't expand to make more room for those collisions, um, it would have an increase in pressure. So we are going to be um, looking at all of these, um, these variables, I guess you could say. Um, we're gonna look at pressure. We're going to be looking at, um, when I talk about the size of the balloon, I'm talking about the volume, right? It's, it's the volume of the air inside of it. Um, that volume can change when you uh, increase or decrease the pressure. Um, and we're going to be looking at how temperature is involved as well. Um, so you're going to go to a FET simulation. I've, I've provided the link for you. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then um, in the FET simulation, there's some, there are some instructions, not in the FET simulation, but there are some instructions for you. Um, but I'll tell you verbally what I want you to look at. <clears throat> I would like for you to set the FET to keep the pressure constant, kind of like how the balloon sort of keeps pressure constant. Um, and just manipulate the temperature. See what happens to the volume. Or perhaps you can um, fiddle with the volume and see how it affects temperature. I don't, I don't remember if it has that control on there. Um, but see how temperature and volume are related. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then um, I want you to um, switch the settings so that the temperature is constant. Okay. If, now, if you keep the temperature constant, I want you to find out how pressure and volume are related. Um, now, I don't think you can change the pressure, but you can change the volume using um, the piston in the, the simulation. So see if, if how you change the position of the piston, um, how that volume affects pressure. Then set it so that the volume is constant. In other words, you can't change the position of the piston at all. Um, and then Manipulate, manipulate the temperature to see how the pressure changes. Um, and tell me how those two are related. Now keep in mind when I talk about how they are related, I'm asking for a mathematical term to describe that as well. Um, you, can, you can describe it a number of ways, but we've talked a little bit about how a lot of times relations can be shown. Um, my dog's playing with the toy. Um, relationships can be shown um, as like inversely proportional or directly proportional, and that's going to be the case for these. So when you're comparing temperature and volume, they're going to be either inversely proportional or they're going to be um, directly proportional. Um, pressure and volume, temperature and pressure. And then last but not least, um, what happens to each of those if you change the number of particles in the container? So if you increase the particles, what happens to the other things? And how would you describe that relationship? Okay, so um, go ahead and try that with the FET simulation and we'll check in after that.